Rome is order. Rome is justice. Rome is power. And where the eagles march, that is Rome. And today, the legions of Rome march further north than they ever have before. The year is 83 AD and Rome is on the march against the Caledonian Confederacy in Scotland. General and Governor Agricola is on the march with his legions of Rome and his thousands of auxiliaries that are joining them in today's DEI battle. And yes, we have a glorious 2v2 here on large armies and we have two Roman armies here facing off against the uh, Caledons and against the Iwuru. Iwuru, I think is how you say them, but it's the uh, it's the um, Irish faction, but they have a lot of Caledonian units. But uh, a key thing that the Caledons don't have, but the um, Irish do have, is chariots. Um, so yeah, they haven't actually appeared yet, but they are uh, about here somewhere. So uh, yeah, they are actually this might be them hit over on this flank over here. Yeah, here they are, racing ahead the medium chariots. Yeah, a whole bunch of them here, lots of medium chariots ready to go into action is yeah look at the size of these units as well 45 chariots per uh, unit they could do some serious damage that's for sure but yes the battle of mons Grapius is uh, the battle that we are recreating fought in 83 ad or maybe 84 they're not quite actually sure exactly on the date but um it's a, a battle that was won by rome uh, with pretty light losses historically i think there's gonna be more uh, losses in this one than there was in uh, in history in history rome lost 360 men and they were all auxiliaries this battle was so decisive uh, in history that agricola just used auxiliaries to win this battle he didn't even have to use any of the legionaries he just sent in the uh, the auxiliaries the vtec uh, troops the wannabe legionaries and he sent them in and uh, they defeated the uh, the caledons and killed like 10,000 uh, Scots and the, the cavalry already going in here for the Romans and that's fighting against looks like just um, light melee infantry they killed like a fair amount there but not nothing too insane um, we do have some Gallic cav here and uh, also some Batavians as well they're uh, jabbing with the skirmish cav here so these two yeah just jabbing off you don't often see that you know skirmish cav just jabbing with each other but there you go that makes for a little bit of a change and it actually looks like we got some some equites as well uh, rushing forward as well, trying to route uh, or get those cab off the field. And uh, yeah, they're taking a lot of missile fire right now because that's the problem with Rome too. Everyone has missile capability, um, but the Romans have more. Uh, just about every single one of their units can throw javies. And uh, if I can find it, the Romans do also have a sneaky weapon up their sleeves. They do have a scorpion somewhere. Ah, there it is. Uh, they have a field artillery piece. They have a scorpion there. It's getting ready to move forward. And that's going to, I guess, try and unleash some bolts into them. Because, though it wasn't necessarily mentioned, it's probably presumed that it's there. The Romans often bring field uh, artillery and use that in, in land battles. So, uh, it's one of their sort of advantages uh, to sort of technology and organization. And they have engineers in their army. So, we, we brought it for the sake of it. Yeah. The Romans win this battle in history. Will they win it here today? I don't know. The Caledonians are a pretty strong faction in, in some regards. They have some really cool shock infantry units. And uh, to go with history, the Romans have got a lot of auxiliaries here today. today. So the uh, Romans don't have a lot of their, uh, like their best troops, but the Caledonians have access to most of theirs. Uh, there are some like uh, elite troops, like there are some cohorts, uh, Evocati, which are like the veteran legionaries. There are a few legionaries to represent like the reserve of what Rome had. Uh, there's a fair amount of them back there, but it's mainly the front line is made up of uh, auxiliary spears. We have the cohorts Afrorum here, some African Legionaries going in. They're a long way from home. They are getting stuck in now. Down below against these uh, these bad boys. There you go. Yeah, the uh, Caledonians going in. They're going to fight off against these uh, these African auxiliaries. It looks very similar. To, I like how they do it. Like all the different regions do have different sort of like um, equipment. I guess they would depending on like where they're from in the world. They have to kind of like. Use what they have available. Look at this long line of auxiliaries that are waiting. A lot of them getting uh, javied as well in the face by opposing forces. The other Roman army hasn't really got engaged yet. Sorry about the lag. I think it's just because of the sheer amount of troops. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, we have uh, Roman cav rushing in here. We have some equites. They're going in amongst uh, some of the uh, infantry down there. You can see them clashing, uh, trying to get some hammer and anvils there onto the uh, African 
so the African infantry can be supported. So yeah, African infantry fighting on one side, and then the Roman cab helping on the other there. So that's very, very nice. There you go. The, the cab here has also managed to catch and route these missile cab, and they've also yeah they got rid of all those, and now they can charge into the uh, the Clitigos here and try and do what damage they can to them. So we are back. I've tried to sort out the uh, the lag issues. Hopefully it should be uh, a little bit better. But yeah, we have the cab engaging here. They actually charge into these Clitigos down here. These two-handed real big swordsmen clash with them. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they're doing as much damage as they can to them. The Batavians, I think, are the, uh, the cavalry that went in there. So yeah, some other uh, more Germanic cab that is in the uh, service of Rome, we'll call it, I guess. The Romans, yeah, they're uh, clashing over here. There's some medium spear infantry. So yeah, I, I imagine these guys are in phalanx. So they're going to be uh, fighting pretty damn hard. Very infantry, yeah, it's kind of hard to break down in, in DI. You've got to get around these guys if you want to even stand a chance of uh, beating them. Over on this side, yeah, you can see Rome not doing anything really just yet. They're uh, just sort of using their scorpion, being a pain uh, where they can. And I think actually, yeah, they're moving up Javis and stuff to uh, take over on take on the front line, get as many uh, hits as possible. Yeah, the uh, scorpions here, I think it's actually yeah doing some damage to these... Uh, these heavy melee infantry here, yeah, good unit to go after the Albio Clutterboros. Uh, they're in a uh, sword unit with shields. But yeah, they're getting ready to uh, to charge this Roman line as well. And actually, the Romans have slightly overcommitted the uh, Irish. They wanted to get in behind these guys uh, if they uh, wanted to. The Romans, as you can see, managed to brush off this sort of first wave of the Scots. But the Scots are arriving with more forces here. And the Cav again clashing on this left flank here. And actually there's, there's archers in as well. Are these archers firing while they're melee? They look like they are actually. The Romans going in again. Clashing. Cav going straight on in. For Rome! For the Empire! Kill as many of these guys as you can. I think this is some Equites here. Yeah, some Equites of the Legion. They're going in. Rome's uh, legionaries have been committed as well to the front line over here. They've been needed as the uh, Scots have been outflanking. So the legions have been committed. They're fighting. So look at these uh, guys. They're two-handed swords. I think they actually are defeating uh, a lot of these cohort uh, legionari. Taking them out pretty, uh, pretty effectively. I mean, yeah, losing decisively. These uh, heavy melee infantry, they're pretty solid, they're pretty good. But yes, this was a scenario that was uh, done on my server. We uh, do the occasional DI scenario. I'd like to do some more. I'm getting back into sort of like DI and really enjoying it. So if you want to see more of this sort of uh, content and want to get involved in some of it yourself, then do feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description as well. It's the best place to go to get involved in any sort of uh, DI battles or send in any of your own as well. If you want to have them. Uh, uh, if you want to have them uh, shown off. Yeah, they call Legionari. They are losing, but they uh, could have goes also now losing as uh, missiles start to get involved in the fight. And it looks like uh, the Irish are starting to uh, clash over here with the Roman line. We've got some of the uh, Legionari Clivenorium, which are like the, uh, the Segmenta armor. Legions that we all know and love. The classic Legion look. These are technically, I think they technically count as cataphract infantry, which is a weird term. I think that's what like Rome 2 calls them, or like DI calls them. Cataphract infantry. It's a scary thing. Imagine you just fighting a cataphract alone is pretty bad, but one dismounted with a big shield, equally pretty scary. Uh, the Scorpion, yeah, is actually getting overwhelmed. I think it's uh, been silenced as, yeah, they uh, rush those lines there. Bet that was a very good move there by the, uh, the Irish player to get rid of those Scorpions. Rushing the spear line now is infantry fighting in the forest here. This probably benefits, benefits the uh, the Irish. Uh, cab over here is now flanking. Looks like uh, there's no cab. Well, the Irish shouldn't have any cab. It seems to, uh, to challenge them. There's an issue with the uh, like the Britannic tribes. They don't have really great cab. And also in history, didn't have a lot of cab on the battlefields. They relied more on chariots. More their mode of transport was a chariot. Uh, so yeah, it looks like they are uh, getting ready of the, ca uh, the chariots in the middle. You can see them here. They're all massing up, all like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six units to be through the general. All massing up, getting ready to go in. 
Uh, some of the Irish units are starting to break here. These uh, Tacitos, they're breaking. The Furious here, and so are some of the light infantry. Just can't deal with those cataphract legionaries. Uh, the, all the auxiliary lines hold them pretty well, actually. I was kind of impressed by the auxiliaries. Uh, for me, it was actually more of the legionaries on the side with those uh, Kodigos that are being defeated. Double time! Yeah, the Kodigos legionary. They are starting to win here against some medium infantry. They've got more cav, looks like some, uh, some equites that are about to rush on in. There's a whole bunch of archers over here that could uh, cause all sorts of problems. But we'll come back to that in a moment because Lopepoint is now arriving on the battlefield. We have chariots, ladies and gentlemen. Chariots have arrived. They're going in. They are going in. Uh, my guys form square. You see the arrows trying to pierce as well. He needs to pull through with these chariots. He wants to uh, get them going. So yeah, my crew is kind of key. They just kind of stood there just dying. Spears will do just fine on those, but yeah, he needs to pull that unit through. Uh, he's charging in here as well. I mean, another uh, solid spear line being formed here. Looks like they formed this defensive formation. I don't think these mediums are going to break through these uh, these heavy spear infantry. It's just not going to happen. Might break through this sword line though, though it's uh, because it's technically a, well, it's a sword unit. It's not a spear. It's not. It's, the spears are a bit more designed to uh, to deal with a jab, so a chariot charge. Um, my general's also has moved over here, Legatus Legionus. We do have Agricola uh, here. He's not like the actual general, but this is his uh, uh, this is his general here. He's Equite Singularis. This is what we had as the uh, as uh, Agricola. So he's just here chilling, vibing, doing his bit. But yeah, the chariots go in, and I actually think one or two of them might have already routed. Yeah, one already has routed. There, 35 of them gone. They have charged into. The uh, cataphract legionaries here, and they're doing damage to them. Look, I mean, they kill a fair few on the charge. I don't know whether he's better to cycle charge them or you're better to pull them through. He's not pulling them through, that's for sure. He absolutely needs to pull these guys through. Uh, the legionaries, yeah, they're taking some casualties, but yeah, the equi they just kind of stood there. He needs to get them here yeah, to pull through. This one's also routed. I mean, routed at 35 out of 45. Eesh. Not good at all. Uh, and they've also getting rushed over here at the chariots. Look at this! The Cohorts Bavatorum has actually managed to get amongst the chariots and actually uh, charge them. That's going to route them. That's the worst sort of uh, nightmare that the, uh, the chariots can have, is just being charged by infantry and not getting a charge yourself, getting you no momentum. The Caledon line is still holding. Uh, the right is starting to break, though, uh, where the chariots have uh, been also sent through. So the chariots, yeah, I think they still do damage as well when, they, um, when they're retreating. So uh, that's a problem for the Romans. Uh, yeah, some of the cohorts are starting to break. At 100 men left as well. It's not good. Uh, these legionaries are down at 80 and they're starting to waver and uh, break. And you can see the Caledons are looping around the Romans. And that is the quickest way you'll uh, kill units in DI. is actually by surrounding them and, you know, sort of breaking the morale of uh, your enemy. You're not going to uh, want to kill a whole unit because units are big. They're like, yeah, like 300, 190 on average. Like, they're big, big units. I think that's another Caledon unit breaking there. Yeah, I think there is uh, yeah, a medium spear that's broken in there. Legionaries ever Carter are being committed now as well. So the veteran legionaries are being sent in. And so is a general here. We've got a heavy phalanx spear unit here being sent in. That could be tough to kill. Phalanx units generally in DI are hard to kill. You've got to get around them. Uh, it's not looking good for the uh, Irish on the side here. Still engaged on a lot of their front line here. Uh, but they're having a bit of a tough time. And you can see Cav is now flanking around. We've got uh, Alabavatorum, Alatungorum. Uh, they're all flanking around now. So yeah, we've got lots of sort of like Gallic and Germanic Cav. That the Romans heavily relied upon. They're going in. It looks like they're going after going after the chariots. Again, they're re-rallied. No, that is not good yet. Chariots are not going to do well up against Cav. It's not a good matchup for them. They'll get eaten alive. I don't know why it's not a great matchup. I guess the chariots. Uh, I don't know. I thought horses would be pretty scared of chariots, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, there you go. The immediate chariots going in, immediately wavering, immediately getting eaten up. They just don't get. I, don't, I guess they just can't like get that that mass charge off pretty well. Um, but yeah, that's just unfortunate. And there you go. The other uh, chariot, the general chariot, has gone in, and then the general died in that charge. He smashed through. Uh, finally, he actually managed to smash through some of these lines. 
and it would have cost him his life. And he, uh, yeah, even though he killed like a spear, you know, he actually could go for a general here, but I mean, I don't think it's worth it. He wants to go for these archers. This one's he wants to take out. This is what they're, uh, they're designed to go for, these chariots. Just, like, mow down archers. These barrel like, thing is didn't stand a chance. And now he's got to go, I mean, he's got the uh, Italian, Italian infantry there, is that? Oh, are these, uh, no, they're Syrian archers, I think. No, they're Italian archers. But yeah, he needs to send the general in. I think the general should catch him. This guy's fresh. Oh, no. Well, I don't think he should have caught him, but he has caught him. I would have thought that the chariots would have been quicker. They're only medium. But there you go. They've been caught, and they, they should lose now, I imagine. I don't know whether he could pull out of combat, but he hasn't. Uh, over on this side here, the Irish still fighting on, I'll admit. I mean, credit to these Caledonian guys. They are still fighting on that. Plugging on against these Romans. I mean, both sides were fairly evenly matched as well in this battle, which is kind of crazy to think about, the, like the casualty numbers. Like, both sides had, like, could potentially have had as many as 30,000 troops in this battle. Or, like, the Romans may have had, like, 17,000, and the Caledonians maybe, like, 15,000, so they're evenly matched in sort of numbers. I mean, it's a small advantage um, for the Romans if it's like the lower oh, tier of their estimates. But I guess if you're evenly matched and you're going in a fight against the uh, the Romans, it's never a fair fight. The Romans are better well trained, better equipped, better disciplined. You need to have numbers or some great strategy if you're going to try and break, uh, break through a Roman line, especially a Roman army that's set up for battle. Mons Grapius taught the Scots that they couldn't fight in a pitch battle setting and they had to go to a bit more of a guerrilla warfare which is how you have like potentially the disappearance of the ninth being ambushed by Scots I don't think it really was but it might have you never know rear charge coming in here from some Roman cavalry smashing into the backs of them some fortunate Scots that should rattle them pretty quickly if it doesn't I'll get some nice juicy kills for those uh, Roman cav Evercarty uh, leader is here. They're getting stuck in. Fight, men! For the eagle! For your legion! Yeah, the Evercarty here just probably chewing through those uh, issues. So they are fighting the Phalanx Infantry then. They've only lost two, so even though they're hard to kill, this uh, general one's lost about. 20, 25, but they are getting jabbied in the side here, which is probably not helping the situation out. Nice jabbies actually from the uh, barrel area, uh, not from the barrel area, from the Sicilian uh, cohorts there. Some heavy spears here that managed to rout some cohorts legionarum. Looks like a lot of these troops here just need to be ordered to go in though and deal with this uh, heavy spear and it'll easily be dealt with. Yeah, not much left, and the Roman Cav arriving these Alatungorum and the Bata Ala, uh, Batav Batavorum as well arriving. They are uh, just mopping up a lot of these archers. Uh, like they even like these medium melee infantry. I don't think they would be able to hold enough Cav charge, but they've also been routed once. So it's not like they're uh, they're fresh and in good nick. There you go. In go the Batavians again. One of my favorite units, is the Batavians, the Cav and the infantry variant. I love them. And they actually are like a really solid unit in Roman history as well. They do so much good. Well, I say so much good, but you know, like they, they serve loyally and well for the Romans, but like that. They're gonna help route more of these missile infantry here. Uh, if we go back to the other side, I think the um, like the Irish uh, faction they're gonna get routed as well. They're nearly out with their general um, dead. But yeah, their morale was gonna struggle. But it looks like these like could have goes. Uh, they're fighting to pretty much, well not the last man, but they're going to fight to pretty much no one left, then they might surrender. They just love wielding those two-handed axes, uh, two-handed axes, two-handed swords. If they had a two-handed axe unit, I'm sure that the Caledones would uh, would have brought it. There you go, heavy melee, which is zero to ten morale, they should break any moment now. 
the rear charge here. Yeah, these Echoites uh, Legion here should route these guys pretty soon. There's literally like 20 seconds left of this battle. And shortly we should see the Romans, I think, just, you know, get this victory. They are going to probably have less than, um, they're probably going to have more, sorry, than um, 360 kills, I think. It, uh, 360 deaths, sorry. Um, but yeah. It's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be many. They still kind of got, they won this battle fairly decisively. It's one of the more decisive battles that we fought. Just because Rome's super strong. And these factions like the, uh, the Scots, they just cannot stand up to them. And there you go, a close victory uh, for Rome, apparently. I don't know, there's still a lot of healthy units here for Rome, but they did take a fair few losses. I mean, they took about 3,000 losses. Yeah, almost, that's 10 times what they took, really, uh, in reality. But yeah, uh, well done to uh, Mickey, who was playing in this one. He did a good job. He was fighting uh, against Mythic. Uh, but yeah, well done to both Mythic and to uh, Dostil for playing in this one. Thank you for coming as well. Uh, it's always uh, appreciated when people come and join these scenarios. Um, but we'll have a quick look at some of the kills. I mean, my general getting 365, 165 kills. He nearly died. He got committed and nearly routed. Um, yeah, my Alabafatorum getting 139 kills, 132. My uh, Equites, 171. I will have a quick look at some of these kills. 360 with the uh, Cohors Bavatorum, uh, 254. Four with that one, um, the Evercarty getting 133. Uh, my legionaries are 206, but they're taking a lot of casualties 169, 159 with some cohorts down here. And uh, then we have Mickey playing as the other uh, Roman army, 215 kills with his uh, Legatus Legionus, 102 kills with the Scorpion here, 265 kills with his Batavian Cav, 272 with the uh, Tungorum Cav, and his Equites 154 kills. Uh, and then we've got Cohors Alpinorum. 126 kills, 112, 131 kills with the uh, Coors Hispanorum. And then we have uh, Coors Avocado, 272 kills. Uh, and then we have Mythic playing as the uh, yeah the Irish faction. His general, 127 kills. Shows that what Chariots can do, and he definitely could have got more. Definitely did not use these guys well. One have got 60. Uh, his Clitigos, 86 kills, 100 kills. Uh, and then his Tacitos, 97 kills. We have Dostil playing as the Caledons. Um, Again, his clutter goes doing the best, 122, 100, uh, 140, uh, 90 kills with some of these uh, like lighter infantry here. Um, but yeah, a bit of a tough fight here for the Caledonians. Uh, but that's kind of how it was. They, they fought this battle, they got massacred, and uh, then they decided to fight in a bit more of a guerrilla warfare and stop the Romans from occupying uh, Scotland in that way. And also because the Romans, I think, just realized there wasn't a lot to conquer and hold on to in Scotland is why they why Agricola really left. He did a big tour and then left after the after he'd uh, seen there was nothing to conquer and hold on to. But there you go, guys. That is today's DEI historical battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show support. And I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye for now.